investigation of irradiation effect on the chemical properties of clean and dirt steel with small punch testing. Along with me, our industrial partner, uh, Tom Davis, Professor Lee, and Professor Abdullah. We are from Nuclear Future Institute, Bangalore University. And uh, we, we are a group of 54 people, uh, 9 academics, uh, 13 PDR postdoctoral researcher and 24 PhD students. And we uh, we look for the area of basically dedicated to nuclear research from nuclear medicine, nuclear instrumentation, fuel performance, quantity and safety and security, thermal hydraulics and reactor physics. And uh, basically dedicated to nuclear. Uh, these are the contents for today's presentation. Uh, you all are aware of nuclear, nuclear energy. It's uh, clean and uh, zero carbon emission energy which, which is suddenly growing. And the, the main important part is structural part because it will be exposed to harsh environments. It might be uh, thermal shocks, scrapes, or high deformation or uh, corrosion irradiation stuffs and it is the uh, most important part for generation 4 design to look for the structural parts and these structural parts will mostly go for irradiation will be like neutron or helium specifically it, so it's basically important to understand these properties in irradiated conditions and there is a less development in microscale modeling for these uh, harsh environment. And due to the technical difficulties or testing difficulties, I can say that the material, like we are facing difficulty for testing the material because sometimes it's a active material, so we have to look for a small, small material as well. As so uh, this is our basic outline we decided for our work to study the irradiation damage uh, on fracture properties of structural materials. So it might be a, a steel, uh, we are considering mostly steel. So we decided the three conditions like as a result, how it performs to the irradiation damage, how it performs to the thermal mechanical treatment if we go for some thermal treatment to the metal. And then uh, we are going for iron, uh, irradiated condition. We are facing difficulties for the nuclear uh, nuclear irradiation condition. So we will be only going for a iron irradiated condition. And we will be looking for a mechanical testing in terms of uh, small punch testing, uh, nanodation testing and micro tensile testing. And in addition to that, some of the micro structure analysis and EPS And with this, we will be going for a material modeling for the fracture. So I will be presenting my first portion, like first phase of the other project. So I, uh, we considered P90 will be right nitrogen 16. This is the composition of the uh, T90 will steam. Uh, as received, uh, we look for the microstructure of that material. And we, we selected for small punch test because of the, uh, well, in future condition, as we are going for irradiated case, so we want to use less uh, less interaction with the irradiated material. So we went for a, a small punch test with the smallest diameter is 8 mm and the thickness is 0.5 mm. And uh, these are the steps involved during the small punch test. I mean, uh, we consider two extreme cases uh, for a temperature range of 400 degree to 550 degrees and strain rate we choose a smaller strain rate of 0.003 and 0.3 mm per minute. Uh, these are the some test results for uh, those two temperature with the different strain rates. And I calculated the sum of the average properties doing this like the loading <coughs> at the ending at the Fracture, uh, fracture energy, displacement at the fracture, and fracture surface, <coughs> what the fracture surface has been observed after the uh, test. Now, we have to look 
as we are planning to look for a damaged behavior, so we started with our inverse finite treatment analysis. First, we considered the hardening model and the damage model. So, a hardening model, we uh, we have taken the RO model, which considered the strength in terms of plastic and elastic uh, <coughs> behavior. So, these two terms, first uh, first two terms, the strength of the material uh, before uh, before plastic region and uh, after plastic region. And then we look for the damage model. This I think most of you are aware. So, wide nucleation group. Uh, we consider for this. I, I will not go in detail how to what each parameter looks like. Uh, and we uh, choose for uh, ABEX software uh, for the modeling and considering that the only dust is a deformable body and other punch uh, uh, holder and a die to be as a, a rigid bodies. And some of the uh, uh, friction coefficient. 0 0.25 to 0 0.3, and there is a little of 0.3 micrometer uh, displacement gap has been kept between the holder and the uh, uh, holder and the sheet. which has been taken from the literature, Q1, Q2, and Q3. These are the usually taken from the literature study I have chosen. And to calculate the each of the parameters, we divided our whole curve into three uh, speed steps to first correlate the strength and the plastic strength and the hardening coefficient and then going for a hardening and damage initiation and then finally final step we, uh, we went for a void cohesion and the final failure. So we divided the <coughs> whole of the low displacement curve in these three steps to calculate the parameters. And these are the parameters which each step we calculated. And some of the increments we have considered for uh, those uh, parameters. Some of the results, final element analysis results for this. The, uh, initial crack uh, initiation and the final failure, how it uh, looks. So, the proposed method is showing good result for the uh, adjustable condition, but we need to look for the other conditions because uh, still we are progressing with the result. And uh, I will be like, we will be working on the dependency of material models. Currently, it is showing good for adjustable, but we need to look for the <coughs> other results. Thank you very much for the presentation. So we have uh, a couple of time for questions. I mean, other questions? And if the model you implemented in the final element has been implemented in implicit solver or explicit? It's explicit. Oh, explicit. And what is the velocity of the punch? Point zero point zero three. The input table I have shown. And here, I mean because it, it takes CPU time. So exactly, because it's explicit. It's but I mean, if you implement it in implicit, it will be super fast. fast. Maybe I can tell you 50 times faster. Yeah, but uh, we want to look for the slow standard deformation, how it behaves with the smaller models. Because uh, when we are going for ion irradiation, uh, it, it will be only penetrating to the micro layers. We can say that the penetration is not there. So if I go with the higher strength rate, so I may not be able no, to see Not the I mean strength rate, with lower strength rate, but in the implicit solver. I, I can try the size of the CPU times only will affect us. That's well, there are some more questions? Um, actually, maybe let me ask you a question. I mean, uh, you've shown the, the microstructure of the material. I mean, are you trying to correlate also the microstructural properties to the microscopic testing? Yeah. yeah. As we have not gone for irradiation ca case yet, so mm -hmm. it, like it is basically as received how the material is ferrite matrix scheme after irradiation how it behaves. So in that process. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, so you're planning also to do some some you know, morphology simulations on the material to yeah, okay, I see. Yeah. And the implementation was a uh, user implementation in our course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much.